So this first step is optional because you might already have a project that you want to put all your libraries in, or maybe it's already in a project, but I'll breeze through it quickly just in case. So I'm going to create a project called libs to put all my libraries in. I'll make it private, make it git with the agile template. Within that project, we can create multiple repositories, one repository for each of your libraries. Each of those libraries, we're then going to create NuGet packages for it. And I'll show you how to include those NuGet packages into your solution and how to upgrade them from pre-release to release, etc. So let's go ahead and create a repository and we'll upload our code into that. I like to initialize my repositories with a git ignore, so I'll go ahead and do that with Visual Studio. Initialize. Now I'm going to go ahead and clone this, even though it's empty, and then I'll drop my existing project into it, which will then allow me to commit it. So let's go ahead and click clone, and we'll go ahead and copy that URL. Now I'm going to go out to a folder on my computer where I can put those files. I've created a folder here on my computer. I'm going to right click inside of it and do git bash here. If you don't have git bash here available in your context menu for Windows, it might mean you just need to install the git tools for Windows. If you install git, it'll come with bash as an option. I like bash because it shows me the branch I'm in while I'm doing checkouts and things like that, merges, etc but you could use any terminal. You don't need to use git bash as long as you have the git tools in your system path. Let's go ahead and do git clone, and then I'm gonna paste in that URL that we got from DevOps. Press enter, it's gonna clone that empty project with the readme in it. Now we can copy in our files. So go ahead and open up this folder, and then we're also gonna open up the folder where you have your library code that you're ready to move into DevOps and make into a package. Let's begin. So I've got on the left side of my screen my unversioned library that I'm ready to copy in and make it packages out of and put it up into DevOps. I'm going to copy all the files I want, which is basically the entire project, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it right here. Now I could have included my Visual Studio settings. Hopefully the git ignore would have taken care of that. Now double click on the solution, or in my case, since I have both 2019 and 2022 installed, I'm gonna do open with 2022. And we're gonna to go to the git changes here. So if I look bottom right, if we have the git changes, if you don't have it, you'll need to open that tab. And you'll notice that everything that passed the git ignore has an A, which is add stamp next to it. I just have to put my initial commit message. I'll just call it initial commit. Go ahead and commit all. And then we're going to push to the origin. If you'd like to see what that looks like, you can go to git manage branches. There's the outgoing commit. Boom. And now it's up there in the cloud. Then look at remotes origins main. And you'll see there's my initial commit. Double click it. You'll see the files change. Let's go back over to DevOps. Over here, you can go back to the repos, go on files, and you'll see. There's my project folder, there's my solution file, and all the files that I just committed. Time to make the package. The packages are going to show up in Artifacts. So go ahead over to Artifacts, click on that. And we're going to create a feed. Tell it who you want to be able to access your feed, and I'm going to give your feed a name. In my case, I'm going to call this Seagull Lib. And we'll go ahead and click create. And now we need to be able to connect to the feed. Go ahead and click connect to feed. We'll choose NuGet. And it's going to actually give you the instructions that you need right here. As the instructions say, you're going to need to get the tools. So go up here in the top right, click the Get Tools button. It's going to give you a little bit of information. Make sure you read it all. Go ahead and download NuGet. I've already got it downloaded, but I might not have the latest, so I'm still going to click this link. On the right, those are just Visual Studio installers. What you want from this left column, pick the top one, the recommended latest version of NuGet. 
and download it in the bottom left. In my downloads folder, I've opened the command prompt so you can see what's going on. If I do dot slash nougat.exe, you'll see it's not an installer. This is the actual nougat command. So we can just copy this to where we need it to go. So you could put it in your system path, or if you're like me, I'm just going to copy it and paste it from my downloads into my project folder. Continuing on with the instructions, we're going to hit the copy button to get the nougat config file. Go ahead and go back to your project folder. I'm going to create a nougat.config file and paste in what you copied from this page. So we'll just do right click, and of course you can build this in Visual Studio, but I'm just going to use Notepad, do text document, <clears throat> call it nougat.config. And we'll go ahead and edit that with Notepad as well. Just paste that in there. If you find that it only pasted this piece, you might have to go back and manually copy it all. Sometimes the copy button only grabs the middle. I think it's just because that's what's enabled for some strange reason. But you must have the configuration tag or it'll complain about it. No problem. Let's save and move on. Uh, you can use any terminal here, but we're going to open another terminal in this folder. Go ahead and just make sure your NuGet restore is working. So dot slash if you're using PowerShell and NuGet restore. If you get this beautiful error here, it's just really just telling you that you don't have your project and your solution in the same folder, which is fine. We'll just go up one level and run it there. It's looking for a specific package.config file, which as you can see is not here. So I'm going to go up one level and move my file there. So let's go ahead and do that. Copy both my NuGet XE. Actually, I'm going to move NuGet XE up here to the level where my solution file is. And we're going to run that there. All right, you see NuGet restore worked. Now what's left is to pack and push it. To pack it, go back into Visual Studio. It's not like the old days. We don't have to run a command line anymore. We will have to, to do push it, but not to pack it. So right click on your project, go to properties, and go to application, and then packaging on the left. You're gonna scroll down and fill out as much of this as you can. The more information you put in here, uh, the more information will show up in the package when it's being consumed. Uh, but you're going to scroll all the way down to where it says package. And you're going to check the box that says generate a NuGet package on build. That's the most important thing. Uh, obviously, fill out as much information as you can about the assembly and the description. Um, in my description, I'm going to put uh, general library for email, SMS, and other shared uh, routines but of course put stuff that makes sense to you uh, we'll save the project and now I'm going to build upon building it should create the package because we checked the box so now let's go to the folder I'm going to right click open containing folder there's the project if I go to the bin debug because I built in debug mode there you can see it is there. Obviously, you're going to want to build and release. If this is a production package. Let's go ahead and copy that or cut it. Doesn't really matter. And we'll come on up here to where our working folder is here. Have everything in one place. I'm going to right click and open terminal. The packing is done. It's time to push. Go back to your DevOps and scroll to the bottom where it says publish packages. We're going to copy that string there. Now in the instructions, it does say that the API key can be any string. In the example, they just put AZ. I uh, <clears throat> think you'll want to adjust that as necessary. But the package path is going to be where we are now because that's where I copied the file to. So hit dot slash, hit tab, and keep hitting tab until you See your package that we don't have to type it out. And the only thing left to change here is because I am in PowerShell, I need dot slash on the NuGet. Dot slash just means current directory. And I'll press return. And the magic is happening. You'll need to sign into your DevOps to continue.
And if everything goes well, it'll show that your package is pushed. We're not done. We need to go back to DevOps and promote that package in order for it to be able to be seen within Visual Studio in your consuming project. So go back to DevOps. And now we're going to click on Artifacts again. And there it is. That's a good sign. Go ahead and check the checkbox next to it. We're going to click Promote. We're going to go to Pre-Release because this is built in debug mode and it's our first go of it. I imagine you'll want to do a pull request, etc., before you move it to release. But it's the same process to promote it to release. Click Promote. Now we need to get your Visual Studio connected to this feed. If you go back to connect to feed, you go back through here, all you're going to have to do is copy this URL here. Now we go to Visual Studio, and we're going to go to our NuGet options. So Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager Settings, and we're going to add a package source. Click the plus, and now down here, <clears throat> you're going to paste in that URL. We're going to call it whatever you want to call it. I'll call mine Siegel Software Package. And click OK. So now if I go to Git Manage Packages on the solution, for example, and I search for Siegel, I might need to change to my new package source here. And you'll have to check include pre-release if you made it pre-release. Sometimes there's some issues with the network. If you wait long enough, you search for the right term, and you connect it to the right package source, and you have that URL as I showed you how to get it, it will eventually show up. In my case, I had to close Visual Studio and reopen it, but I think it was just a matter of timing. It takes a little bit the first time you publish a package for it to update the feed for Visual Studio to find it. Anyways, there you go. You can select it, and now you can install it. And as you can see down here, the description matches what you entered in the properties of the project before you made it a package.